Tyler Glasnow picked a bad day to have a bad start. Did his body t- pick a bad day to have a bad day? Let's talk about it. Let's get locked on Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans. Welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked on, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. This is the daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us every fan podcast and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked on Dodgers. If you want to become an everyday or all you have to do is listen or watch every day, which can be made easier by subscribing and get notified when our episodes are ready. If this is your first time listening or watching, welcome. My name is Vince Amperio, joined by my co-host, Jeff Snyder. Jeff and I are both lifelong Dodger fans that have, Spent a decade or so covering the team. We've been doing this podcast for a greater part of that decade now, uh, or a podcast in general on the Dodgers. And, uh, you know, we've watched a lot of Dodgers, and we're here to bring you our thoughts and uh, hopefully smart thoughts on the Dodgers, making all of us better Dodger fans as a whole. Dodgers lost last night to the Nationals on Jackie Robinson Day. Tyler Glasnow had his first bad start as a Dodger. We got the news after the game that he might have been betrayed by his body a little bit under the weather the last few days uh, with the flu-ish slash cold-ish bug that had been passed around, uh, I guess, since Arizona. That's been almost a month ago. But either way, it came at a bad time for the Dodgers in general because their entire pitching staff is in flux as injuries and things of that nature have kind of taken a toll. Yeah, it, it was a rough time. I wondered about it during the game. I actually saw him coughing a couple times. And, you know, it, it's kind of funny. In real life, people cough all the time, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything. But uh, you kind of – when you see a professional athlete coughing, you think, okay, is something wrong there? It's kind of like in a movie. When somebody coughs, you know they're eventually going to die of cancer or something in the movie. But, uh, you know, hopefully that th- – this is just a cold and not, uh, you know, a movie for class now. But, you know, it, it was – I saw him coughing and seemed a little bit uncomfortable. But overall, it was like his stuff seemed pretty good. The the curveball, he was mostly landing. He did have the one wild pitch that scored Abrams for the first run. But, you know, it, it was good. It just wasn't quite – he wasn't quite putting the ball exactly where he wanted it. And still, like, he he had a chance to get through he, – he almost had a quality start. Um, but instead, uh, you know, because if he had gotten through that fifth inning, he would have pitched a sixth inning. But then – uh, it seems like the last three losses for the Dodgers, it's all it's been kind of one big hit. You had the two-run homer by Tatis on Friday, and then you had the three-run double by Profar on Sunday, and then the three-run homer by, by Garcia here, where you know that that the the Nats were up three to two at that point. Uh, that put them up six to two, and that kind of basically put the game away. Uh, and, and it was the one one bad pitch, and you know obviously putting the two guys on base before that, it's not just the one bad pitch. And then that's the thing about the big hits that score a lot of runs. It's, you know, with Profar's double, it was the walks leading up to it and, you know, all that. But uh, it, it kind of shows how fickle the game of baseball is that, you know, if he makes a better pitch there, the Dodgers probably win the game. Just like if if whoever fire eyes and made a better pitch to Profar, the Dodgers are in that game. And, you know, the be- Brazier makes a better pitch to Tatis, the Dodgers win that game. Uh, but instead, they lost all three of those. Now they're ten and seven, and uh, I think the sky is falling. No, eleven and eight. Right? Is he eleven and eight? Yeah, eleven and eight. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the very least, it's a good sign that Glasnow struggled on a day when he went, maybe wasn't feeling a hundred percent, and hopefully that's something you can chuck up to. Okay, well. He hopefully won't be that bad again. He, he he might have, you know, one or two not great starts, you know, maybe three, four, maybe not great starts the rest of the way. Uh, but, you know, to give up eight hits and six runs, two walks, still had the five strikeouts. Like you said, the stuff was still there in spurts, or the stuff was there, just not the overall command and control, which 
obviously it was a big help. It, it kind of started off right away in that first inning with Abrams getting on and then stealing and then taking third and then taking home. Uh, you know, it, it kind of all went from there. He just couldn't really, even with the five strikeouts, he struggled to put away guys. And that's kind of ultimately what hurt him. Uh, I believe the, the big home run was on a full count, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, and, and he just left a slider right there to a guy who, who hadn't homered yet this season. So, on that front, I'm not worried about guys now in the sense of, okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, his next start, you know, I would assume in five or six days he's going to be feeling better. But, yeah, on the Dodgers side of things, it, you know, tough time. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about all the transactions and everything that's kind of happened later on. But the Dodgers did kind of need the length from him today, at least the six innings. You know, I'm sure they were hoping for, for seven innings ideally, and they didn't get it. And, uh, yeah, it, it was – Tough. The offense kept a minute. You know, they they put the tying run on base at least a few times in in different parts of the game. Didn't quite work out, but uh, yeah, you know, a, a bad loss. But I did see a tweet that said, since maybe 2015 or so, every time the Dodgers have won on Jackie Robinson Day, they have lost in the playoffs. And the one time they didn't win on Jackie Robinson Day was 2020, and we know what happened that day. It was obviously it was on April 15th back that day, but they still had it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely something, right? So uh, may, maybe that's meaningful. Figured out why I thought they were eleven and seven. I was watching uh, Pete do the the postcast, and somebody in the comments there said they were eleven and seven. I thought that doesn't seem right, but then I looked uh, at the app on my phone, and it said Dodgers eleven and seven. But then I realized just now, I was looking at Sunday's game because I've been looking at the box score of Profar's double to because I knew I'd be talking about that, and so uh, that's why they were eleven and seven after that game. Now they're eleven and eight. So. Uh, you know, still in first place, still in decent shape. But I, I think it is kind of funny, though, that like when the Dodgers play well in April, uh, Dodger fans say, well, it doesn't matter if they can't do it in October. And when the Dodgers struggle in April, it's like, well, see, this is why they're going to struggle in October. And, uh, you know, obviously I would rather have them be playing well, but slumps happen. And, you know, this is uh, we don't know if this is a major slump or if this is a, a four or five game slump, you know, and hopefully they'll bounce out of it. Uh, so I guess the key to that, maybe this is turning into a segue here because one of the keys to them turning it around is going to be, you know, the offense uh, scoring more runs. Yeah. If Taylor Trammell is taking big at bats in October for the Dodgers, a lot has gone right or a lot has gone wrong. Uh, realistically, probably a lot has gone wrong. So, you know, it, it, it's a rough go of it for now, but I think most of us have been Dodger fans long enough to kind of realize like, Hey, you know what? Sometimes it this happens and they don't play that great. And there's a lot of stuff in, in flux. And one of that, like you said, is that top of the order, is the offense in general. We're gonna talk about Shohei and Freddie both having struggles uh on a little bit different planes of, of the game, but we'll talk about that. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I've been told I'm a competitive person and, uh, you know, I would say that that is true. And the competitive side is coming out with Monopoly Go because I'm sure you've heard of it. I, I've seen a bunch of ads for it even before we started doing it here on the podcast. And it's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with your friends. You can charge them rent. On iconic properties just like monopoly you can rob their vaults of riches for yourself you can even be on top of the leaderboard and show who is the biggest monopoly tycoon you can also team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards so get in the game and join your friends download monopoly go now free on the app store or google play that's monopoly go right now on the app store or google play Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. It's Dodger season, and, you know, there's definitely games you probably want to get tickets for. Maybe you wanted to go to Jackie Robinson and get the – Jackie Robinson Day and get the hat uh, last night's game. Maybe you want to go to the game on Saturday and get Walker Buehler's bobblehead. But, you know, tickets are tough to get sometimes, or, or maybe not the tickets you want – May not be available from the regular website, but you can go to Game Time and they have tickets everywhere and tickets for great prices. 
and other, you know, it's not just MLB, but, you know, we'll focus on the, on the Dodgers for now. They also have other high profile events like uh, other sports, concerts, theater, all that type of stuff. They got a lot of different things going for them. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. You can check out uh, views from the different seats in the venue. You can get yourself a guarantee that you will pay the lowest price because they have the game time guarantee. Uh, which will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row after you already got yours on Game Time. So go check out the Game Time app right now. Download it, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB. L O C K E D O N M L B for twenty dollars off. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We want to thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube. And we come in every day or by listening or watching every day. Right now, Lockdown's NFL Mock Draft Live is scheduled for April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern. Streaming on the Lockdown Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the Ultimate Six Episode Series on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern to hear who local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft, April 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today. You can find that on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Uh, speaking of the Amazon TV, Amazon Fire TV channels app, Apparently, there's a bar, uh, my hometown of San Pedro, that uses that. And the other day, we were playing uh, on one of the TVs at the bar uh, into the late night. So, uh, you know, shout out shout out to that bar. I, don't, I didn't get that exact name yet. But, uh, yeah, Jeff, you, you know, what's better than grabbing a beer and seeing our faces on TV? Yeah, uh, I, I wouldn't mind grabbing a Diet Coke, I guess, and uh, seeing our faces on TV. You know, I don't frequent many bars, uh, but, you know, uh, people are there. I'm glad that they are. But, do they have the sound on on TV bars? I don't, most of the time when I see like that type of stuff, the sound isn't on. Okay. They have like the music playing and it's just kind of on in the background. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. I, I, uh, the, the picture you sent me, you're reading an Ibotta ad in the – so yeah, yeah. they're even running the ads there in the bar. So yeah, There we go. Uh, not pretty cool is the Dodger offense as of late in terms of – putting up the, the the big amount of runs that they need to win the games or being close enough to win these games and not getting it done. Shohei Otani has struggled with runners in scoring position specifically, and it's a somewhat split between his time before he got hot and the time after he got hot. So he you know has at least uh, spent that split that in, in half. Freddie Freeman has also been struggling as of late especially with the power has only had a couple of doubles, no homers in the last week or so uh, hitting just over 200 in that last week or so he actually hit on field batting practice before the game on Monday, which he doesn't do very often and uh, didn't take any balls past the right side of the, of the second base uh, past right, 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 the right side of second base. Uh, and then his first hit in the first inning was a rip single into right field, but either way, Jeff, uh, we've talked about this Dodgers offense going when the top of the order is going, and uh, they've now lost three of their last four, and uh, it's been a little bit because of the top of the order not getting it done. Yeah, it, it is. I am noticing, though, you know, you mentioned about half of the plate appearances for Otani with runners in scoring position have come since he got hot, uh, but uh, of those ones, a lot of them have been with two outs, and I wonder if it is a different – mindset you know no going up there knowing i need a hit to drive in a run i wonder if he you know if if he's maybe more comfortable knowing well at least if i get a sack fly you know because when he came up with one out uh on saturday uh and uh runners on second and third and he hit that deep sack fly you know like but when you do come up knowing that i need a hit uh, maybe it's just, you know, I think part of the issue with him when he was struggling early in the season was putting a little bit too much pressure on himself. And there probably is some of that still uh, that hopefully as as other people uh, step up and continue to, to, to hit better, maybe that will make him feel a little bit less pressure on himself. 
you know, there, there's always a, a settling in period. And I have to assume that as he's hitting better overall, that he's also going to hit better with runners of scoring position. Uh, and, and Freddie, you know, you remember in 2021, 2020, 2022, 2022, he was on the no, 2021, uh, when he, the Dodgers were playing against the Braves and, uh, he went over, over four with four strikeouts or something in the first game of the series. And, uh, and so they were talking to him after or before the next game and asking if he was going to change his approach. He said, no, I've been doing the same thing for the last 11 years. It's worked for me. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing. I trust it's going to keep working for me. And then he, he went off and he had a great series and had a great world series. And so, you know, that Freeman is very clearly like he has a, a routine that works for him and it does keep him out of prolonged slumps. Uh, this is about as prolonged as a slump as you get. And even that, it's like, it's not like he's over his last 18. He's getting hits. It's just, you know, the power is not there. It's, you know, not getting as many hits as you would expect. But I do think Freeman, of all people, is one of those guys you expect to go through a stretch where it's like, oh, is he ever going to get out again? Yeah. On the Otani front, I mean, in, in the case of the long term, I'm not worried about him hitting a for the position. But... You know, in, in the sense of two outs or one out, when you have Freddie Freeman hitting behind you most of the time, you know, in theory, you should be getting better pitches to hit, um, you know, even if Freddie's not going right. And I think it's more of a matter for Votani of just what one small sample size and two, uh, you know, he's still not quite right at the plate, even when he's, you know, was hot. Uh, it didn't coincide with obviously if Mookie, you know, like Mookie. Wasn't as hot, or there, there, you know, Mukio hit a, a double or single, and then Shohei will get out. You know, they've they've had a lot of back and forth, back and forth. I think when these guys are all right, and we we kind of saw that for a few games here and there as the season's gone on. Uh, that that's kind of when the Dodger offense is clicking, and and that's kind of what it was last. I think uh, was it last night they got, or they didn't get out in order, but they each came up with a chance to do something. And it didn't quite work out for them. So uh, it's tough right now, but sometimes it happens. It's also kind of interesting that 16 uh, at-bats, I think it's 18 plate appearances for Otani with runners in scoring position. It's not a lot. Uh, compared to the rest of the team, Muncie has 27 at-bats with runners in scoring position. Uh, let me see if I can get plate appearances. Yeah, plate appearances will be better. Muncie, 27. Freeman, 24. Teoscar, 25. Uh, Smith 19, Outman 20, uh, and then then you've got uh, Otani with 16. It's just uh, it's kind of interesting. Like the bottom of the order isn't getting on base, yeah. Although Gavin Lux has 14 uh, uh, at bats with runners scoring position, yeah. this is kind of crazy. Lux has uh, five hits with runners in scoring position and two RBIs in those off those five hits, so <laughs> that's a uh, that, that's hard to do. Um, but then, you know, Mookie only has 11 at bats with runners in scoring position and 10 RBIs. Uh, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, I think Otani will get more opportunities with runners in scoring position as the bottom of the lineup picks things up, whether by changing personnel or by breaking out of slumps. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully hitting better overall will also translate to hitting better runners in scoring position. Yeah, one of those, you know, James Outman. We we were thought about talking about him. Maybe we'll get into him on um, tomorrow's episode. But he has been hitting a little better of late. He was that runner in scoring position in the seventh inning uh, when he got on via single. Mookie got on, and then Otani again. He hit it hard, ninety eight miles off off the bat. Uh, just didn't split the gap. He hit it a little bit, you know, too straight at the center fielder. So it, it, it does happen. But yeah, if Outman and Lux can get going which is, you know, Lux specifically is what we talked about a lot in the offseason of him being that guy, you know, that second leadoff guy. Hasn't really materialized yet, but if he can get that going, Mookie gets more about more at-bats with runners on base or scoring position. You know, Shohei in turn will also get more at-bats with runners on base and scoring position. Uh, Freddie's already getting a good amount from Mookie and Otani being on base a lot of the times, uh, but everyone can benefit if more people are on base. Yeah, for sure. 
All right, there is, we talked about a lot of movement the other day. There is uh, even more movement kind of going on in the sense of the Dodgers uh, moving guys up and down and MLB debuts and much more. So make sure to keep it locked on, Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high-value customers, drive higher revenue, and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right buyer, surface key signals, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That's linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Let's go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. We want to thank you for being an everyday or if you are one an everyday or is someone that listens or watches to this here podcast every day or close to every single day. If you're not one already, you can start doing that whenever you want and you can make it easier by subscribing wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube. And remember, you can go beyond the podcast and become a Lockdown Dodgers insider at joinsubtext.com slash Lockdown Dodgers. You can text, get text directly from us. You can text directly with us uh, and get you know updated information reactions thoughts uh i sent a video of kershaw warming up or throwing on the field uh in there earlier so you know not a lot of people get to see that unless uh, i don't think any other beat writers were posting it today i saw a couple pictures but either way you're getting stuff straight from dodge stadium sometimes and you're getting stuff straight from the news and today uh or, or yesterday was a perfect example of why you should become a locked on dodge insider because there's a lot of moving pieces a lot of moving parts a lot of reports uh, there was a, a few extra guys at Dodger Stadium, uh, one being Nick Ramirez, or Nick Ramirez was already there, one being Ricky Venasco, one being Kyle Hurt, and then we got a report from Fabian Ardaya that Landon Knack is expected to come up and throw for the Dodgers at some point this week. I don't have confirmation, but uh, I have it on good authority that it's probably going to be Wednesday. So, uh, yeah. yeah, Jeff, there's a lot going on. Yeah, Roberts did say after the game today that – uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, will be the bullpen game that Yarbrough will t- be taking most of down. Uh, we don't know if, if Knack will be the starter on Wednesday or if they'll use an opener. I uh, don't know if it's going to be a glorified bullpen game, you know, but they do have Yarbrough. They have Michael Grove. They have Kyle Hurt, who is another one of those guys who is at the stadium, hasn't been able to do the roster yet. You have to assume that Nick Ramirez, after pitching three innings over the last two days, probably just by nature of he's going to be an unav- unavailable for a couple of days. He's probably going to go back to triple a. He's a guy who has definitely earned another look though. And you know, uh, he'll either be back in a couple of weeks or even sooner if somebody gets hurt, you know, or hurt, uh, you got to start watching on YouTube. If you want to see all the air quotes when we're talking about the, the injured list, but, uh, you know, they, they've got a lot of guys who can take down multiple innings and with Ramirez and Venasco taking down two innings each here on, on, Monday night puts them in really good position, as good a position as you, as you can be going into, you know, two straight games with, you know, bullpen game or bullpen ish games. Uh, basically the whole bullpen is rested. Uh, you know, if Venasco stays on the roster, you, you figure uh, Kyle Hurt needs a roster spot. Landon Knack needs a roster spot. Uh, they already sent JP fire Eisen down. So it might be, Ramirez and Venasco, just because of the fact that they both threw two innings tonight. Uh, but, you know, two scoreless innings for both of them, uh, they're they're going to get their shots. Uh, it was exciting for for both of them to see, you know, Venasco's debut is all, you know, any Major League debut is fun. Uh, and we'll see Landon Knack's Major League debut on Wednesday. Yeah, you know what? The, the pitching staff, it's in flux, like you said in the first segment. And uh, this is some of that fluxing. Uh, that's probably not a word, but you know, here we are. Uh, it, it, it's pretty exciting, you know, to see the different guys. Hold, you know, Kyle Hurt is it, it's been 15 days today was the 15th day since he got sent down, and so today is when he became eligible. So that he will be back up, you know, probably I assume in the morning they'll they'll make those moves and we'll find out about it. Uh, we'll mention it on the insiders. Um, but yeah, it, it's 
I, I think they are going to start figuring out, okay, which arms can help us here because we need some helpful arms. Yeah, I think obviously this is not an ideal situation in terms of they've lost guys to some injuries and ineffectiveness and guys taking longer than they expected to get back from injury. But I do like it in the sense of we're getting some of these guys to show their stuff. And, you know, last year, we probably would have never seen Emmett Sheehan if there wasn't so much going on with the Dodgers and their you know pitching staff being in flux. And Bobby Miller might have not come up until later on in the year. And who knows if he would have been able to prove himself uh, as a guy that's you know going to be in the Dodgers rotation moving forward. So at, I don't think, you know, Landon Knack might be that guy. I don't think they're looking so much for starters at the moment in terms of guys that are kind of surprised, but I do think Nick Ramirez, like you mentioned, you know, Ricky Renasco major league debuted only 20 pitches for two innings. So I guess in theory, he could be available uh, on Tuesday. And if not for sure on Wednesday and with, you know, Ryan Brazier and other guys struggling, Vessia struggling, like if they can find a couple arms that can stick around and, and at least get an extended run and an extended look, uh, then that's beneficial for the Dodgers in the long run. It, it's tough in the moment. You're really counting on a lot of guys to pitch well or pitch effectively and efficiently. But if it, you can get through the other side of this, uh, you might have a longer, you know, you might have a better idea of what you have on your roster and what you might need to go after uh, in terms of bullpen. Yeah, and that's kind of the whole point of these first couple months of the season. You You win as often as you can, but a lot of it is – figuring out what you have for October, fig figuring out what you need at the trade de deadline, figuring out what you have available in the minor leagues. Like Landon Knack almost surely will pitch on Wednesday and then be back on the mi in the minors. You know, hopefully they won't set him down till Friday so you can get a, a second day of MLB pay, you know, since they don't play on Thursday anyway. Uh, don't make the roster move till Friday so you can get an extra 3000 bucks or whatever. Uh, but, you know, it's uh, that that's kind of the nature of being – a prospect, you know, Kyle Hurt, I think will probably stick around longer uh, since he's already been optioned once. I don't think this is a short term thing. I think there's at least at least a few weeks that they'll call him up uh, since there is a limit on how many times you can option a guy. Uh, I think they kind of had to last time, but he's a guy who can be a spot starter. He could be a long reliever and obviously has great stuff uh, and, and has kind of earned a chance to be in the bullpen, whether that is at the expense of one of the struggling veterans or, or not, you know, remains to be seen. You, we've talked about this before. Almost all these decisions end up being made by the injured list. Uh, you know, that it, we did, we had no idea Bobby Miller was hurt and then he was on the injured list and that's kind of the way it goes all the time. And so there will be opportunities for all these guys. And this week is an opportunity week, but honestly what the Dodgers really need to help out these pitchers, is for the offense to score eight or nine runs each game because then you have a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah, ideal world for sure on the offensive side. A uh, couple of notes and other things from Roberts pregame. Um, on the Yamamoto front, he said he doesn't foresee Yamamoto going on regular U.S. rest for uh, the you know the, at least the immediate and maybe significant future. He did say that Walker Bueller, after he pitches on Thursday in that last rehab start or in a rehab start, they'll evaluate how he after that if he returns or if he throws one more. Clayton Kershaw was on the field throwing. He said he's he's still a ways away, but that he's progressing the way he's supposed to. Bruce Argadra was throwing long toss in the outfield before the game. Uh, Robert said that he's had a really good last week. Uh, that he should he threw a bullpen. He threw some long toss. He should face hitters in the next week or so, and then after that, go out on rehab. He's still not going to be available for a little while in terms of the 60-day injured list, but he, you know, at least the very least looks healthy and uh, getting over whatever he was getting over. And then the last thing, Emmett Sheehan cleared up, not his uh, shoulder, but forearm kind of inflammation was the issue with him. He says he maybe will throw in a week or so, Dave Roberts, uh, wasn't quite as optimistic as that. So, yeah, there, there's still a lot more happening uh, in the Dodgers side of the pitching. Is she in, in Arizona right now? He's not with the team, right? He was with the team on oh. Monday. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I, I haven't seen him in the dugout or anything much this season, so I don't know if he's been with the team. 
the that the, I don't know. I saw yeah, I saw him at the Jackie Robinson pregame. He was okay. There, so. Okay, and yeah, it seems like maybe that was a, a special day that they even guys who they're not calling up. Yeah, quite Bueller yet. was there too. So. I, I also wonder if Taylor Trammell's playing time uh, had at least something to do with Jackie Robinson Day, since Trammell is, you know, there, there's not nearly as many African American ball players as there used to be, and having the opportunity to wear Jackie Robinson's, you know, team's uniform on that day and actually play, you know, I. I wonder if there was some of that in him getting some playing time. Uh, I am interested to see, and maybe this is a closing note, the Dodgers, I think, faced Patrick Corbin uh, on, on Tuesday, uh, which might be the, the tipping point for Chris Taylor and Kike Hernandez. I assume they'll both be in the lineup. Patrick Corbin has led the league in losses each of the last three years, and this year so far his ERA is more than two runs higher than it was in any of those three years. Uh, he's not good anymore. He's left-handed, so... Uh, I, I think if Chris Taylor can't hit Patrick Corbin, then it will be time to say uh, you're injured. Um, you know, in kind of same with Kiki Hernandez. Like the Dodgers need to break out offensively against Corbin, and they're going to need uh, those guys. I assume they'll both be in the lineup because it is their best chance to get some hits. Yeah, positive No, Chris Taylor didn't strike out on Monday. He actually did bring in a run on a sack fly. So, but again. There's a lot there. Kike as well. You know, those guys have got to get going. If not, you know, maybe that's Taylor Trammell. We saw him because they kind of need to see what he's got. If not, Andy Paja is knocking on that door. So, okay. yeah. We'll maybe see. we'll see Austin Barnes in the lineup too now that I think about it because he hasn't played in a little while. Right. And yeah. so we'll see. He's going to play one of the next two games. So. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, but hopefully the Dodgers can treat Patrick Corbin like the Patrick Corbin he is. He's making over 35 million bucks this year. Can you imagine the having Nationals a guy lead the league in losses three straight years and then say, by the way, you got to pay me 35 million bucks in that fourth year? The Nationals uh, sold their soul for that 2019 title. And it hasn't really gone right for anybody after that, other than, uh, well, none of the pitchers, at least. Yeah, flies and fly forever, though. So. Yeah. All right, uh, that'll do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day. Make sure to find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube. Make sure to be coming every day or by listening or watching every day. Make sure to subscribe to get notified when our episodes are ready. Remember, you can check out Locked On Sports today or Locked On Sports Los Angeles on YouTube or on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. They're both 24-7 streaming channels. Uh, talking about the biggest news and stories from the sports world and the LA sports world. You'll be on the podcast and become a Lockdown Dodgers insider at jointsubtext.com slash Lockdown Dodgers and get texts directly with us, uh, get news from us. You can ask questions uh, or we can just talk Dodgers, whatever you want to do. You can also find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Lockdown Dodgers. Jeff's on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vince since 91. You can DM us on either of those accounts. You can also get a hold of us via email, LockdownDodgers at gmail.com or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car, if you're at home, text your mind advice by podcast, Locked on Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one. We'll talk to you tomorrow.